Hi, and thanks for joining us here today. On today's show, we've got Josh Bashinsky, who's a thought leader and innovator in the fields of uh, artificial, artificial intelligence and technology. Fascinating uh, conversation as we explore where technology is taking us and what we can expect to see in the future. Hi, Josh. Thanks for joining us here today. I guess from, can I say sunny Victoria? Where exactly are you? What's the, what's the weather like there? It, it's not quite sunny in Victoria, but that's kind of par for the course for, for the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we had good sun through the spring and the summer, more than usual. That's the positive end of climate change. We're getting more of a California summer, but the winters are a little harsher. So the pros with the cons, but yes, sunny-ish Victoria, we could say. There we go, sunny-ish. And uh, yeah, we understand obviously, uh, well, I guess I'll say Canadian weather. Uh, you were a Winnipeg originally, I guess, right? Uh, That's correct, you yes. saw the light, so you know weather better than most. Uh, well, how, <laughs> so how now you know why I moved from Winnipeg to here. No, yeah. Nothing more needs to be said. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And, and you did school at Dallas as well, right? So you did schooling on the East Coast? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So my wife and I, uh, we did our, we finished our uh, honors bachelor degrees uh, here on the island in a little school called uh, Vancouver Island University in Nanaimo, which is just north of me. Beautiful little town, beautiful little college. We drove all the way across Canada with three cats. Uh, it's a big country. Let me tell you, if anyone's ever out there ever driven across Canada, you know what I'm talking about. You think Saskatchewan and the prairies are long, just get to the St. Lawrence River, get get to Lake Superior, get to the St. Lawrence River. It goes on and on and on. Quebec is, goes forever in a straight line along the St. Lawrence. It was, it was insane. And then finally we made it to all the way to beautiful Halifax, uh, which is a gorgeous city as well, which we loved quite a bit. Uh, and Dalhousie, which is a great university. That's where I did my MA. And then uh, we went to uh, closer to where you are, a little bit closer. Uh, I was doing my PhD in Toronto at York University. And just two hours down the road, down the treacherous 401, my wife was doing her PhD at uh, uh, Western University, uh, University of Western Ontario in London, Ontario. And we were doing that for a couple of years. And then we looked at each other and went, no, we don't want to do this anymore. This is not the job we thought it was going to be. Uh, and so I came back to AI, came back to IT, came back to consulting, marketing, consulting, uh, reverse engineering, AIs, uh, and uh, have not looked back since. And that's so interesting came back to because it's, you know, an industry, well, we talk about now in its infancy, the rally, as we know, it's been developing for quite some time. Mm -hmm. uh, as Josh, as you described coming back to it, how did you, uh, how did you get involved originally? And then as you described coming back to it, what was, what was that process? So I've been working in IT since I was 19 years old in the mid nineties. And I bought my first house again in, in uh, frozen Winnipeg. I bought my first house for $43,000 Canadian. It was a three bedroom townhouse, fully furnished basement, two bath just tells you what you could get in the 90s, you know, for a house. And now the same house is probably 420,000, right? Uh, but, uh, uh, and uh, and I, I quickly got into the web. The web was all the new thing there. And that's kind of kind of analogous to what we're going through now. The dot-com boom and the web boom of how society was going to radically change with the internet and with cell phones is exactly analogous to what we're going through now with AI. AI is gonna change society that much, if not 10 times more. It is it is bona fide that big of a change. It's not hype, it's not vaporware. It's not like crypto, it's not like blockchain, it's not like meta, although although the metaverse is still clinking around and might might come back and probably will come back as a video game of some form. But but it's 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 the real deal. And 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 uh, uh, people right now think AI is just, oh yeah, so it's kind of like autocomplete on steroids. It writes paragraphs for you, not very well. This is just the start, okay? So uh, I've been working in IT all that long. And of course, machine learning and things like that have been going on for quite a long time. I kind of cut my teeth in reverse engineering Google's algorithms and working in an area called SEO, uh, but which is now just completely evolved to reverse engineering AIs. It's an AI job all day, every day. I reverse engineer AIs, I build AIs. Uh, uh, that's all I do. So it's an AI job, really, in my opinion. I'm an AI consultant. And plus, my, my, uh, my academic background was in psychology and philosophy and science. And so I use those backgrounds and I apply those to AI. So yeah, um, uh, Google's been using machine learning at least since 2007, 2006, which I've been all over the machine learning they're doing. And machine learning is just one of the techniques in AI, and especially one of the techniques that are making AI so smart. Uh, uh, they are literally learning, right? The machine learning. They're using uh, instruct methods of what humans do, and that gives an extra level of instruction. We're teaching the AI every day. We use it, and we 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 already we already uh, uh, associate with the average human associates with maybe five or six huge AIs on a daily basis, and that doesn't include ChatGPT. It well, doesn't. What are include... those? What are those ones, Josh? That's interesting. Yeah, those are all the marketing AIs this. from Google, from 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 the Fang, from Facebook, Amazon. Google, YouTube, Netflix, TikTok, 
all those machine learning AIs, uh, all those marketing AIs, they already know us better than we know ourselves. Should we they be concerned know... about the way we're using them, the information we're giving them? I'm extremely concerned about that. That's a, a, extremely concerning. Um, Why? Uh, uh, people on these podcasts, and I'll give you the very, very short version of this, JP. People on these podcasts have all asked me, is AI going to destroy society? Are we going to see a, a Matrix-style moment and a Terminator-style moment? And I remind people that uh, when you when you, when you think about warfare, if you read uh, Sun Tzu or Clausewitz, you break warfare and modern warfare by the specialists are broken down into three categories: psyop warfare or propaganda, economic warfare, and this is how they ramp up in terms of risk, and this is how they ramp up in terms of of deployment. Psyop warfare and propaganda. You just brainwash people, right? Or you just talk to people. You try to negotiate. If you can negotiate, there's no need for war. It's much less risky. That's the first option. That's Cold War. Cold War number two, a little bit uh, harder, is economic warfare. You economically disenfranchise your opponents and you wanna economically booster your, your allies. That's what the US and the West has been doing successfully since World War II, which is why there has yet, knock on wood, been no World War III yet because we've economically outcompeted everybody else. Now China is starting to threaten that, right? And and you can see the, the moves the US is doing to, to disenfranchise them. Third branch of warfare is kinetic warfare. That's the boom, boom, bang, bang stuff where people get drafted blood and death and terrible things that we don't want, right? I'm making light of it, but that's absolutely what you do not want to happen. Uh, sadly, which still goes on in the world in various places. So will AI be deployed in these three areas? Yes, for sure. 100% certainty. They're already being, to answer your question, this is my long segue to answer your question. Yeah, yeah it is question. being deployed though. Yeah, we know it's being deployed. It is, it's already been deployed in marketing, in propaganda, in information dissemination, in information cl classification, in information blocking, in, in hidden censorship that you don't get to see. Google is not a search engine. Google is a censorship engine. Facebook is not a social media platform. It is a censorship platform. It censors what it doesn't want you to see because it doesn't make them any money. All they care about is making money. So capitalism plus AI is a terrible, terrible recipe because it is all the, all the evils of capitalism with pollution, economic pollution bubbles and ecological pollution, AKA the poisons that we ingest and kill us sooner. It's that on steroids. And so am I worried about uh, 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 the information that we give out to to these these platforms and and the, the general environment in, in particular, yes, extremely worried. It is literally going to destroy this society. Uh, uh, I, and I think not in like a Matrix Terminator scenario. It's not going to be cyborgs with plasma rifles walking over skulls. That's highly, highly, highly unlikely. But yes, AI drones will be deployed, and there will be beside civilian populations, and there will be collateral damage. So and that will that is already happening. That the hundred percent is already occurring. And hopefully we'll be limited just to war zones that doesn't break out in the, in, in the West, in the first world, but that very well could happen there too. It could be used for policing. And we already see how the poor track record of policing with people of color and BIPOC in, in the West, that's gonna continue to occur. So it's not gonna be the sensationalized Cameron movie. It's gonna be a much more boring documentary, but equally as scary. And it, and it definitely, definitely will occur. So am I worried about it? Yes. And let me tell you why I'm specifically worried about information because you're like, what do you do? Okay, so they know I like golf, who cares? Well, here's why you care, because you are playing chess with an AI that knows you better than you know yourself and is programmed to make you spend more money per year. And every year, the AI gets psychologically better. Your personal data is your psychological data. Your personal data is your psychometric statistics. And with your psychometric statistics and Bernaysian capitalism, using uh, Edward Bernays' uh, uh, theories of capitalism and marketing. Uh, and Edward Bernays, for those who don't know, was literally the nephew of Sigmund Freud. Edward Bernays was his nephew. And he literally took, I don't know if JP, if you know this, but you're nodding your head, I, I guess you do. Edward Bernays literally took Uncle Sigmund's philosophies about psychology and weaponized them for capitalism and for propaganda. Applied to capitalist purposes, that's right. Yeah, and so exactly. well, I mean, to the make, psychology of spending, right? Exactly, to make people spend more money without realizing they're spending more money. And that's what the AI does. It hits you with that McDonald's ad or that golf ad or whatever it is that, that, that pushes your buttons the best to make you either angrier so you spend more. It does that too, pushing us to the left and right, bifurcating the middle. That's on purpose, guys, by the way. Or to make you, you know, whatever, uh, more more desirous for that particular thing, and they know exactly when to give it to you, to to just crank out 0.1 percent out of more money out of you every year to bleed the poor to the rich. It, it is a mechanism to bleed the poor to the rich because the rich don't care; the rich just want to get richer. So, am I worried about it, JP? A one it's, million percent, yes. Yeah, it's fascinating to hear, you know, and it's ways that we don't realize it's being used right now. I mean, uh, for what you just described, what are some of the things that we can do to keep ourselves safe? I imagine you know, limiting the data, right? So the ability to, in all the fangs, to, to limit 
uh, the data that they're able to collect is probably the first sort of the first key thing to do, right? That you would think so, JP, and that's a good intelligent suggestion. The problem is we're already way past that. We are already way out of Pandora's box, right? So, so Google and uh, the, 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 the Facebook, yeah, uh, TikTok, YouTube, Amazon, Netflix to a much lesser extent, those marketing uh, companies, those top you know, 10 marketing companies, which are the richest companies in the world, because information is the richest commodity in the world. And that exact information, again, is your psychometric data, because it allows them to sell it to you far uh, exponentially more uh, effectively than any society or capitalistic endeavor previous, right? So that's the that's the dystopia we're in. It's not it's a big brother that that doesn't know it's big brother. It's 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 the it's the truth speak or the mind speak. What was it called in Big Brother? I can't remember. It's the truth speak or the mind speak that you don't know is truth speak or mind speak that the AI is talking to you. And you think you could hide your data from them. You can't. You can't. They know everything about you already and they know everything about your demographic. People actually sadly are not that special. We're not that different. And in the law of large numbers, we're sheep and we all do the same thing. And especially that they're pushing us further to the left and they're pushing us further to the right so that we're more predictable. Instead of the AI trying to guess what kind of sweater Josh likes, it just makes him think he's very left wing and he wants to buy the left wing t-shirts and they sell more on left wing t-shirts, right? Or to the right wing, whichever persuasion you're, you're, you're towards. And, right? and it's interesting, Josh, as you say that, because I've heard a number of people saying, I mean, I've shut mine, you know, to the extent I'm able to shut down from this information sharing. And I've had friends say, well, who cares? Like to your point, do they know I like golf, right? Uh, as you say, it's it's you've got to think beyond that. You have to understand that they're taking your, you know, likeness for golf and yes trying to get you spend there but trying to get you or disseminating information to you that tells a certain story right that's that's exactly actually what's happening. Right, right exactly they can profile you they are doing digital profiling and, and with the same kind of connotations as profiling for the police right almost for the same reason of, of, of acquiring targets right so they know you like golf and they know that you know, they know i'm white they know i'm 48 and they know all these things about me now they can infer all these other things with a very high level of statistical probability and start feeding me these other ads that are like oh wow and i'll buy those things right they, they will upsell they will bundle sell right this is how they make all this money and then they will charge people more that will charge businesses more money to use the platform so the businesses need to charge us more money in turn because the ceos and shareholders are not taking a cut and that increases inflation and cost of cost of living until we literally can't afford it anymore yeah, it's a runaway train yeah and that's the big thing because it's not i guess we're not spending the ad dollars it's the businesses that are spending the ad dollars mm -hmm. to reach the targets so we exactly. identify we provide the information businesses then spend to reach those targets because even as we say we buy more if we're I guess uh, there doesn't have to be a direct link from this discussion. We could say that, you know, we not may not even be buying online, uh, but you know, exactly. we are in first. You know, the analogy we're using here, we're we're buying things in the golf industry, uh, whether it yeah. be you know online or walking into a golf store and making a purchase there, right? Yeah, or it's or it's the Uber we took to get to the golf, or it's the shirt we bought to go golfing, or it's the food we bought after the golfing, the booze we bought after the golfing. It's all of those things, right? It's all of those things. All those things coming together, right? And it's and, uh... and yeah, and so uh, yeah, and so it, it it's this 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 kind of uh, uh, catch twenty two, this kind of uh, feedback system that that uh, makes cost of living increase. And and you're absolutely right. You're paying for my golf habit, and I'm paying for whatever habits you have because the businesses need to tax us more. The businesses I work with call it the Google tax, and they just shrug. Google won the internet. It's over. You know, 20 years, they've been the only search engine that anybody uses. It, is it all well, that's so interesting you say that. So let's not, uh, let's not be too presumptive here because, uh, uh, I mean, Google has won Web 2 search. Uh, but as we talk Web 3 or as things are evolving, let's go back to the way we began the conversation, saying this is just the start. So Google's yes. won Web 2 uh, and uh, the way things are being done now. But how are they going to be done in the future? Again, I know they're trying to extrapolate or you know leapfrog off of the way things are being done now. So mm -hmm. let's put on our predictive hats, right? I know that's what people tune into this show for. What do things look like in five years from now, Josh? You know, guesstimating here. I can guesstimate with some some uh, relatively high accuracy. I think I was researching a book for Wiley on this. I've talked with CEOs, been working in this industry for my entire life, uh, so I can uh, predict. Also, with the history of political thought. Uh, that I've read in the last 5,000 years, I could predict with some some fairly great accuracy because human psychology hasn't changed, of course, genetically with the same for the last 100 to 300,000 years. Uh, and uh, so here's the problem, is that capitalism was never intended to uh, meet big tech. Big tech can weaponize the, the, the marketplace in such a way that it breeds monopolies, right? And so even if Google's walled garden 
starts to be threatened by Apple, which it will. Apple will make a search engine and an AI with Siri. They're already spending over a million dollars a day to do so. OpenAI with Microsoft is doing the exact same thing. Anthropic just got $4 billion. Uh, uh, so there's all these new competitors in the horse race. And you think, oh, great, that'll keep costs low and it'll give people choice. And it means they can't gouge us too much in any one of these walled gardens. That's where you're wrong. They can each gouge us as much as they want. Four competitors is not an equal marketplace in every stretch or form that's going to keep prices low. And if, if the uh, as inflation continues and people who are uh, in upper, upper, upper middle class are shifted down to just upper middle class, you still have a lot of people to, to buy there, right? So this kind of economic inflation is going to continue, but also all the money of the society changing is going to push into AI. So I highly recommend people at the same time, despite what I just said, I highly recommend people invest in AI, get into AI, learn AI, watch AI like a hawk, because it is the new platform for how everything is going to run. Uh, there are possibilities to make it more ethical uh, in terms of a, a, of a robust open source solution, which is probably highly unlikely, but, but is still possible. Um, uh, and, and the idea basically is, you know, AI is how everyone is going to get rich and the rich are going to get richer. So jump in on that train because that's that's the only train in town. Okay, so let's 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 drill down into that a little bit because we say get involved or invest in AI. So how you know somebody listening right now, how do they do that? Well, you should be watching definitely all the AI news that's going on about who is invested in what, what big moves are going on. Uh, get buy into the walled gardens I'm talking about. Get the Chat GPT plus 20 bucks a month, get the perplexity 20 bucks a month, try Anthropic out, try Google Bard out if you can. Although interestingly, you can't try Anthropic and Google Bard out in Canada because uh, of a law that Canada has released. You can use a VPN and yeah, use yeah, it that You way. can use a VPN. Um, uh, Google's pretty good at blocking VPNs, generally speaking. It's a little bit more, and I work in this in industry, but it's a little bit more trouble than it's worth for me because I get such good results out of OpenAI because again, I was an early investor. I've used it so much. I've helped train it. I know what to expect out of the AI. And here's the thing that um, that a lot of people need to realize, and including big tech, is that first mover advantage matters. Your user base and how you instruct the AI off of it matters. And so MidJourney by far and away is, for example, the best image generation platform. Even though they, they are only released on Discord, you have to use the Discord gaming app, which is kind of like a forum, you know, like a gaming forum, to, to, to access uh, MidJourney, uh, uh, there is no official API yet, although there's unofficial uh, ripoff APIs that, that scrape it and get access to it. Um, uh, it's the Wild West again, right? So it's like the web, it's like the 1990s with the web, it's the Wild West. Uh, you need to have someone in your industry who's watching AI like a hawk because all of a sudden, like that, your whole business can change. You can change fundamental ways in which you're doing business, you can change fundamental goals that you have for your business because now AI automates it, AI does it, AI allows you to do something that you couldn't do before. Uh, 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 you, can, you can start uh, uh, consolidating processes in, in your business that AI can suddenly do uh, the job of 10 people with just now one person. So, so it's interesting. I do, I do want to reflect on how it's going to change business, but uh, I still want to speak to, uh, I guess when we talk about invest in AI or get involved, you say, okay, so you're saying, yes, obviously use it use the product offerings that are available, which, yeah. and, and I guess you talk about the, the companies that are there now. So the ones that I guess you could possibly be investing in would be, uh, well, I guess you could be indirectly, you could be buying Google. Uh, so understanding that, or, you know, and I guess any of the big tech as they develop theirs. Yeah. Um, Basically when I was saying invest GP, I meant invest your time, invest your mind space, invest your, 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 your heart space, invest your time. Uh, because this is not hyper vaporware. In fact, I would not invest my money in Google right now because this is the first time in the last 20 years where Alphabet stock will be in question, right? Because $4 billion and $10 billion are being dumped into competitors. This is the actual, absolute worst time to buy Google stock, actually, uh, in terms of risk, right? It, we're too I, early to see who the, who the, new, the new leaders are going to be. Or are far we too, too early? early? We're far too early, right? Far there, too so. early. Far too early. Like, so I, I would not count out Facebook yet. I would not count out Google yet. Uh, just because Google employees have gone everywhere you know, and, and splintered and broken up and are now making competitors doesn't mean they're going to win. OpenAI clearly, and I was just saying, uh, first mover advantage and your, your user base matters. So right now the clear winners are mid-journey for images, clear far and above, better than DALI 3, what they just released. Still better than that. Although DALI 3 has some advantages and I'm going to be using it in some of my apps that I'm building uh, aside from MidJourney. And uh, OpenAI's ChatGPT4, 
clearly is the winner in terms of its robust use for getting it doing programming. I, I haven't hired a programmer in months. I've been doing programming on my own. Uh, or to say, chat uh, GPT-4 has been doing my programming. Right, I just you use that to do all the programming, right? What, what apps are you developing right now? Uh, I've just a bunch of little apps. I've, I've developed an app to test other AIs. So I have all the API calls of all the AIs that are available. And I put a prompt through and I see, I check the quality, see which one is best because new open source AIs, new, new private uh, for profit AIs are coming up every day and they all claim to be slightly better at this or slightly better at that. And so I literally had to write a Python code to put a prompt in and show me the output of like 10 different AIs and I could eyeball them and see which one is better. And I'm going to write an AI to analyze them and then cons consolidate the results. So, so you can start, it just, the only limit is your imagination. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. only limit is your time and imagination. Now this is the web again, times 10, you know, how the web changed society and how just new things that just didn't exist previously are now a thing and old things like, uh, like uh, dialing the phone for movies. Uh, I was watching Seinfeld recently. I was noticing all the things that are dead and gone now. The white pages, having to find a number from someone, uh, not texting them, having to call them, them having to be home at a certain time to get a call. Like just all the crazy things in society that have changed. AI is going to do that times, times 10, 10, if not. Yeah, you know, and this is so fascinating. That we, you know, I think we were going down the path of predicting. Uh, and I guess that's a good way to even... Uh, steer us down that path again is to is to look back just even a couple of years uh, of the way we were doing things and talk about how well, that's not even going to be necessary anymore. I guess you should say like I mean the yellow pages. Imagine that uh, to think uh, to think about talking about investing. Right at one point the yellow pages were you know one of these blue blue chip investments to make and that's yes. uh, quickly bankrupted. And we're going to have those types of companies be disrupted and and go down the tube, right? What types of companies so, like that are really at risk? Software right companies specifically, because it's where AI, everyone thinks robots, but that's coming too, right? Elon Musk is already doing great work with his robots. Boston Dynamics is doing great work, their robots. Now, I don't know if they're gonna be able to get the price point they're talking about. Right now, that robot dog that Boston Dynamics sells, last time I checked, which was three, four months ago, it cost anywhere from 90 to 130 grand US and had a 90 minute battery. But there's there's million hour batteries that are right around the corner too, so we're going to see an explosion in robotics pretty soon, and the the definition of labor in the next ten years are going to be completely redefined, right? Yeah, that's one thing that uh, I mean a lot of people have been speaking to now, uh, and you know, you talk about unions trying to defend their space. I think rather naively to think that things are not going to change so drastically that uh, that they need to be thinking how they're going to be doing things as opposed to trying to protect turf, right? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, if you're talking about the writer's strike, um, that's a great they, example, the writer's strike. Yeah, yeah, that's a great example. And it looks like they won, they got everything in that that contract that they wanted. It looks like from from I'm a, I'm a non lawyer looking for, from 10,000 feet. I did ask ChatGPT to summarize it for me after giving it a search and Bing. And it, and it gave me the point forms. And it looks like they got everything they want and AI can be used, but it can't be credited and it can't replace them. And that's probably the right balance to strike. And that's probably the balance that everyone will strike either with this precedent or just with common sense. So you so the writers are going to use AI and they're not going to credit it. So as a, a consumer of the product, mm -hmm. we are going to be looking and watching at AI, at least initially produced materials, aren't we? Uh, 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 I think I'll be using it more in the brainstorming process. Uh, but eventually it will be produced because ChatGPT will get as funny as any comedy writer within the next five years, easily. Hands down, I'm 100% sure. So, and it will be the first one that will as well, because again, that first mover advantage and the huge user base, open AI in this horse race with everyone else is far beyond them. It doesn't mean the rest can't catch up. And it doesn't mean Google can't buy them, right? Google has the liquid cash to buy them anytime they want. A hundred billion dollars, whoop de doo That's what Google makes us profit in a year, in a year. That's what they make as profit or have for the last 20 years or roughly the 10 years or whatever it is. So, I mean, they've got a huge war chest, big, huge moves can be made there. Right. And big, huge open source moves can be made in terms and our, our complete operating systems are going to be completely different. All of us are going to have a personal secretary working for us. AI will produce all of the information that society uh, or the vast majority of information that society produces, and it will consume the vast majority of, of the information society produces the, the bespoke, I wrote it myself market will be kind of like vinyl, like people collecting vinyl now, like people will like it because it's better and human writing is better and there'll be human experience in it. That chat GPT just, just can't quite nail every single time, but 90% of the time it will nail it and it'll seem like a human wrote it with vast human experience, vast human emotion, and you will not be able to tell the difference. People will tune in because uh, they like the, the hum or the, the warm 
feel of a vinyl as opposed to uh, yeah. um, what the actual content is. I mean, we're seeing music produced right now and I've listened, I'm sure you have listened to many of the yes. uh, uh, songs that are produced in. Uh, can, what are the differences between those songs and what the writers are making right now? Well, it's funny you ask because I'm also a bit of a, a, an audiophile, a bit of a, a music lover, uh, playing in many bands myself and being a bit of a, considering myself a bit of an artiste in that regard. So, so take my delicate genius comments with a grain of salt, but it's disgusting. Of course, it's disgusting what the AI is producing. It's, 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 it's soulless crap right now, but, but you know, it, it's like, it's like all these AI tools are just going to be filters in, in pro tools, in, in Photoshop, in illustrator, and they're just going to be ramped up until like it's 30% AI generated. It's 40%. Every year there'll be 10% more AI generation until it's completely AI generated plus or minus 10%. So in as short as five years, it could be 100% AI generated or as much as 15 years, it could be completely AI generated. But basically every year it's gonna be five to 15% AI generated because they're using an AI just, okay, we need an AI to fill in the, the, the drum track, but but you're gonna sing the lyrics. Okay, and, and Rihanna says, fine, that's how we'll do it. And so you get Rihanna in there, right? You're not gonna replace Rihanna or you're not gonna replace Beyonce that soon. But after 10 or 20 years, it'll be so commonplace that you will. And there'll be so many, you're going to have Marvel movies made on YouTube by some guy in his basement that are just as good as the current blockbuster Marvel movies or Star Wars movies, perhaps even better because they have untapped talent. Like I call this the Billie Eilish scenario, right? Now I'm not, I'm a, I'm not that I'm a bit of a Billie Eilish fan and I could have her backstory wrong, but I don't think I do. So if I do to people who love her out there, I apologize, but this is the idea. She's just some kid in her basement with her, with her brother, some kid in the basement. And because of the, the open source commodification of software, they were able to produce studio quality level uh, uh, tracks that allowed their talent to get out. And they didn't have to go through the noise uh, of, the, of, the, of the auditioning process that goes on currently. They didn't have to move to Nashville. They didn't have to move to LA. She didn't have to sell her soul or worse things to be able to be a star because her talent was that good. And how many BIPOC, how many people of color, how many different disenfranchised people around the world have that level of talent, but they just can't break through the noise because they just don't have access to that marketplace. Well, we're AI seeing the same, going yeah, to, and AI is gonna like, uh, yeah. Enable in that. Power, in power, exactly. Yeah, and so movie makers, TV show makers, music makers, it's gonna empower this creative thinking and it's gonna take the artistry of this and just make it go crazy. And like uh, people are gonna be riffing on each other and like meme creation, right? That, that's how we see it now. You see really creative memes and they're one-upping each other with the jokes and the funniness. And it's a, it's, it's a competitive marketplace that does improve the product if you think about it that way. And so if Sony's not careful, if Disney's not careful, open source is gonna eat their lunch because it's already the case that my nephews and my nieces, they don't watch TV, they watch YouTube. That's right. And, and they watch what people are doing there. And when the quality of YouTube gets to be on the level of like the Ahsoka show, or gets to be on the level of, of the Mandalorian, in, in a new world with new storylines, they're going to be like, yeah, sure, fine. And of course, big, big companies are just going to start picking and choosing off of that then and hiring them and buying them and selling them. And so it really depends on, there was a, now you're a lawyer, you can speak better to this. There was a landmark case uh, in, in the States, correct me if I'm wrong, JP, where a, 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 a lawyer, a, a judge, if I'm not wrong, decreed that you cannot copyright AI material. You cannot copyright AI material. Because a human didn't make it, an AI did. I don't know enough about that to say I hadn't heard that case. I know that it's been it's starting to flow through the case law and there's in various different ways. I don't know that specifically. Yeah, I mean, interesting uh, conversation to have with one of the copyright lawyers we've had on the show. Yeah. Um, so if that is true, if it's being so, generated, yeah. So exactly, let's who just follow owns that through it to its exactly. Legal right. So who owns it? It's been generated, right? And uh, I think it's be well. I'll tell you who owns it. OpenAI owns it. The company that owns the. The LLM owns it, or no one's own, no one owns it, well, and therefore imagine, de facto you know, I think this big is probably, tech can again, use these it. spaces are being defined right now, but I imagine it's going to be the same idea, like so for a camera, right? And this is going back to you know copyright cases. I do uh, am aware of like it's the person who's mm -hmm. taken the photo, so not the person that's actually used the camera to take the photo, right? So the way you've comp composed the light, the way you've you know uh, put things into focus, and you actually snap that photo, that that entitles you to the copyright of that. And I imagine it's the same way that the person who's manipulated the AI is going to be say that okay, I I am actually entitled to copyright or protect the output of the AI. Does that make sense? That's what I thought. And that's exactly my thinking on, on how it should have gone. But apparently I could be wrong, but that, that case did not go that way, uh, which was terrible, terrible. Like, like they, they, they have other cases in the courts right now 
that where, you know, and, and, and giant authors are suing these companies because they know that their works were used at like 0.15% or 0.2% in the corpus or the corpora, which is the plural of corpus. There's our big Latin word for the day, corpora, is the plural of corpus. In computer science, they're called corpus that they train, which is the data set they train the AI on. And it's the same for images, it's the same for text, it's the same for music, it's all the same, right? It's generally the same technology, more or less. And so, you know, if Rihanna is like 0.01% in that corpus, She's entitled to 0.01% of whatever it produces. And so these big tech companies could just start paying out content creators and that makes a new marketplace and it's completely equitable. So I'm like, sure, go ahead, Midjourney, take all my images so I can get my 0.1% out of it and people start using it. I get a check every month. It's and I think beautiful that, way of so doing that it. is also occurring, right? To a certain degree. And it's interesting. Let's, I mean, let's steer the towards a little bit towards the blockchain. I know you talked about this is not the same thing, but it is a way of, uh, by using the blockchain, tracking what is produced. Can you, yes. can you speak to the sort of uh, the ways that that may be used in the future as well to even monitor yes. it? Yeah, exactly. So this is where those ideas that didn't quite fully manifest more than smokeware, you know, in the last five or 10 years, this is where they come roaring back. Blockchain is a encrypted a digital ledger, a public ledger technology. So it means it's shared by everybody. Everybody can read it. Everybody can look at it. Everyone knows who paid what, who did what. So it's public and open and fair. And that's the whole point of it, right? It's not some walled garden owned by some big private company that says, trust us, it's fair which is what big tech has been telling us for the last 20 years. And Facebook and Google have been saying, trust us, it's fair, don't worry about it. Well, we worry about it and we know it's not, right? I, I've proven in many ways it's not. That's what my TEDx talk was about uh, in 2015, the future of Google search and ethics. It's not fair. Someone needs to hold these people to account. And, you know, I hate to say I told you so. Actually, I quite love saying I told you so. You tell me <laughs> glee on my face. But, but I hate to say I told you so, but I was saying this five, six years ago or eight years ago now. And, and now the rest of society is catching up saying, hey, Google, you had this monopoly. You shouldn't have had this monopoly. But that's where blockchain could come roaring back. And these kind of technologies could be used. Will it go that way? I strongly doubt it. Because as you might tell, I'm a bit of a nihilist when it comes to capitalism. Only because I've studied every other time in, in society where philosophers have talked about doing that, like such as all the going back to Plato and how badly it goes and, and they're completely right. Uh, it's nothing more than plutocracy or oligarchy, quite frankly, is what the current version of capitalism is. It needs to change. So when people say, is AI gonna destroy society? My answer is yes, it already is. And it's gonna destroy, it is completely gonna destroy society. Society in a hundred years will be unrecognizable to what we have now because of all the inflation and wars and climate change fallout, fallout we're gonna go through. So when we talk about predicting the future, uh, you need to do, predict your business and, and your monetary uh, uh, aspirations and your investments, remembering that is the case. Inflation is not going away. Milk is going to cost $80, $80 a gallon in, in 10 years, right? So, so that's just going to continue going. If you, if you uh, know about Dalio, Ray Dalio, the, the, the economist, I, I agree with him 110% from all the philosophy that I've read, right? I'm not saying that the U.S. dollar is not going to be the reserve currency anymore. But I am, I'm, I'm, I am saying, I'm not saying the yen is going to replace it, but I think Bitcoin could easily replace it, right? Bitcoin could very easily replace. Uh, people have more faith in Bitcoin than they do in the U.S. dollar. One U.S. dollar is worth 20,000 units of Bitcoin, right? It's like one Bitcoin is 20,000 of this. If just a, a general representation of faith in the system, which is all that is, which all the reserve currency is, is faith in a system. People have far more, more, more faith in Bitcoin than they do in the U.S. Well, dollar. Well, as you say, it's, it's, trackable and if there's only going to ever be that many of them whereas uh, you say one per 20,000 before long it'll be one per 40,000 and on the way up right yep. yeah it will it, it, it certainly it certainly indefinitely will so um uh that's where you need to be watching things and be like oh, okay uh 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 you, you know it, it's in this economic climate that we need to invest and that's why I'm also again so bullish on AI literally and figuratively speaking in terms of investments because that's where all the money is going, right? That's where all the things are going. That's where all the money is going. That's, that's the new uh, breath of life. How else is it marrying up? We mentioned Bitcoin. A lot of people ask on cryptos here. So, uh, you know, Bitcoin, how else does it marry up? Does it marry up with Ethereum at all? AI and the applications for it, the programmable aspect of it with regards to Ethereum? Um, you know, I, I don't believe so. This is just my personal opinion. My personal take is no. Ethereum is just doesn't have the brand recognition that Bitcoin does. And until Ethereum has the brand recognition, it doesn't have the faith. And that's, that, that is the lifeblood of a currency, is the faith. Yeah, what people are willing, exactly. That's when you talk about a reserve currency or something that everybody accepts it as being, uh, 
uh, the currency of choice. It's just a faith in that actual in that actual currency. And yeah, it, it's, it's Bitcoin kinda, has it at this point in time in, in any event. Yeah, it, Bitcoin doesn't quite have it all yet, of course. Uh, uh, but but no, I, I can never see a future uh, personally where where Ethereum where you go to a store and they're like, do you want to pay with Bitcoin or Ethereum or USD? Like, I don't ever see that being possible. Bitcoin will be the, there'll be one digital currency that people will rally around and, and that's the bigger one. And that's, that, that'll be it. Um, uh, you know, maybe China could do something with the digital yen. Uh, uh, but I don't see that, that being the case. You, well, you, would, you think people would have concerns about using a uh, cryptocurrency manufactured by by a state you mean choose any state that's but, exactly uh, why yeah. that's exactly why i don't see it being the, ki mm -hmm. the, the, the case um because again it, it the, the lifeblood of a currency is faith and you have to have faith in the brand message what, and china's brand message is 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 not so friendly to the rest of the world it's not again it's not one of those allies in the three pillars of war right uh they have been they've been doing deals behind the scenes almost like dirty deals They're like shaking their hands and yeah yeah you in your sweatshops you make us our sweaters you know that kind of a deal but that's that's not going to stand the light of the day right if and, you go back to ray dalio though and, and he's just talking about how the winner gets to dictate right so at this stage or because of uh you know the marshall plan and how things emerged from the second world war the u.s got to dictate for you know the the, the period of time that we we're in now but that correct. that appears as though it's coming to an end right so why does the next the next uh superpower uh get uh, the opportunity to dictate uh i think because there's going to be a bifurcation between mili military uh and with ai specifically there's going to be a, uh, currency ever since the dawn of time has always been backed up by faith what, what is the main tenet of faith well when the u.s writes a check it has the military power to back it up it has the economic power to back it up right uh, ultimately it when push comes to shove literally it, it's the sword and as as hobbs said where the sword does not exist there is no no there, no there is no law there there is no there, there's no justification right if you can enforce as a lawyer i'm sure you can appreciate this if you can enforce the law then there is no law right so i think however with first AI, thing that's we do going, is kill all the lawyers right uh, <laughs> yeah uh, i think i think the I think, however, with AI, that's going to bifurcate because AI will now be the new weapon of choice. It'll be the weapon du jour, right? And so now military power is divorced from, from uh, faith in the economic currency. I mean, it doesn't matter how powerful the U.S. is with its, with its, its guns and bombs. It only matters how powerful is entities with their AIs. Yeah, generate an AI that uh, it persuades the masses as to the efficacy and trustfulness of that particular currency. And then you've got the, yes. you've got the ability to write the rules. Or, and or use an AI that, uh, which they already have, by the way, which uh, machine learns economic uh, upturns and downturns, bull market, bear markets, and trades faster and better and, and, and artificially makes these bubbles so it can trade faster and better. What, yeah, so I'm surprised, and this goes back to like, you know, even the Superman movie, but uh, what is the AI that's doing that? How come that has not yet been perfected? You say it's being used right now. Where is it being used? Uh, I've, there's this one article I read about it where the, 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 the author, it was in a major newspaper, so it wasn't like just somebody's web page. Uh, and this is not necessarily my, 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 my specialty, so I don't have it memorized. Yeah, everything's personal my opinion here again as well. This is not legal advice either, right? So no one's going to be taking this and suggesting there's, they, you know, it's for some shape or form had a retainer agreement that would allow them to have <laughs> Excellent. But, I'm but, glad. But we are informing people, right? You know, this is an informed Yeah, but no, I did this, and I take truth very seriously as a philosopher. And so what I'm saying is I'm not just whistling Dixie. I did read an article where this, uh, it was a major newspaper because I know how to separate, you know, crap web pages from major newspapers. And that doesn't mean it's necessarily true either. News, major newspapers lie all the time. But it was a factual article pretending to be factual or uh, 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 purporting to be factual about there is already word of an economic AI, a macroeconomic AI, which has already been built and it's machine learned off the uh, uh, the the American uh, 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 financial system, the stock system, uh, uh, the economic system. And it already predicts bear and bull markets and it already can create bear and bull markets. And, and as some group, some portfolio financial uh, 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 movers and shakers at the top level are already using it to, to, uh, to, uh, to affect the, the, uh, the American market and the world markets in general. Whether that exists or not, I guarantee you it will. Because there's only certain ways to employ AI that make the most money, and this will be number one on all the lists. So if it doesn't already exist, which I believe it firmly does, it will very shortly. And it's certainly being worked on. And we talked BlackRock or you know, the trillions of dollars that are uh, put into play by these huge, uh, either the head funds or the capital. BlackRock uh, sounds familiar. That could have something to do with it. 
that BlackRock may very well have been involved in that. I'm certainly, I'm certainly, if it uh, hasn't been developed yet, is something that they're working on very closely. It's something that we will see. So this is go this is coming. Going back to sort of our, our predictions, it'd be fascinating listening to this in a couple of years down the road, Josh. Right. Uh, so these predictions. I'd love know, to revisit it. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to revisit it. Conversation, and we may very well do that. Just that. So. Let's talk again, going back to investment, the way that we're going to see these, these things evolving, right? We know that the data is going to be influenced by this. We know it's going to influence the way that we do business, the way that we interact with one another and machines. Um, let's go get, let's get into Elon a little bit and some of the predictions he's making, right? And we talk about these big companies. Uh, I mean, te Tesla, uh, by his accounts and, and many people, including Kathy Wood, will say that it's the greatest AI company of all time. Do you agree with that? Yep. Uh, I agree with many people say it. Uh, 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 the robotics looks really impressive from what I've seen thus far. And if they pull that off, then I would say, yeah, there's, there's some contention to the claim. Um, the, the reason why, and see, here's the, here's the thing. The reason why they haven't been able, the reason why I say no, or I have any pushback to that is because they haven't been able to make self-driving cars yet. And the reason why they haven't been able to make self-driving cars yet, because they vastly underestimated as everyone in the AI industry has. And as a philosopher, I could talk about this. And as the creator of what I believe to be the first software AI, I can talk about this. Her name is Cassandra. I, I do the Google search. I, I the, the press release is already out. I was, uh, I believe, I am the father of the first software AI from my psychology background, my philosophy background. And I can, so I can speak with some authority about this. Is that there is they vastly underestimated uh, uh, the difference between a Roomba with lidar that doesn't bump into anything, which is effectively what a self-driving car is and an AI chauffeur. The engineering under the hood to make it think like an AI chauffeur and make all those complex orders of decisions, hundreds of decisions on a trip, uh, ostensibly, possibly, uh, and to know the, the dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of contexts it needs to be aware of, of you, of it, if it's driving in space time, this thing called four dimensions with other cars and a thing called rush hour and doing this and doing that. And, oh, there's a baby and oh, there's a woman with a baby. And, oh, there's a, there's a homeless person walking across the street. The decisions the AI chauffeur needs to make and make small talk with you at the same time, the decisions to replicate a taxi driver, that human doing that task, they vastly underestimated the psychological requirements of what that takes. Right, I could tell you with professional authority. So, so is is Tesla the best AI company on the planet? No, because they they they're so arrogant to think that anyone would say that that, that 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 they've even come close to approximating that level of engineering complexity. Not even close. Not even close. Google is clearly the most dominant AI company on the planet. They created the thing called the transformer. They made that. And OpenAI took it and, 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 and ate their lunch. And it's just kind of like, like Prometheus stealing fire from the heavens. And, and Google might well become that eagle to, pu to pluck out their liver every day. That could very well happen. You can't count Google out yet because it's all the money they have. And, and they've been doing this for the last 20 years, right? Yeah, Google's actually able to turn on an awful lot of things that we're not even aware of at this point. Uh, and yes. they've got the data as well, right? So, I mean, OpenAI is training on data that's not as complex and not as in, uh, involved as uh, the Google data is. So not even close. Aware that the, Google's got a real opportunity to play. Well, I guess it's catch up at this point, but uh, also to leapfrog and move on beyond. It's, it's catch up, yeah. But there are leapfrog moves in this game which could be easily made by someone like Google. They were the dominant player the last 20 years. They do not want to lose that. And pretty much everything else they try doesn't work as well than monetizing search. Still, they make more over 90% of their money on those ads, right? That, uh, again, are doing the damaging things that I've, that I've been talking about. Uh, in the microeconomic sense of all the small businesses who can't afford it and go out of business, and I see this on a daily basis because they email me daily and, and beg me for help. Uh, and in the macro sense of inflating, uh, helping uh, con contribute to inflation. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah, so it, it, and that's what it comes down to JP. Uh, and cause I know you want to round this out, the future prediction, the mega prediction, the mass prediction, the golden chalice, the Holy grail that everyone here is looking for is AGI. It's a, it's a computer that thinks for itself uh, on par with a human or even better than a human where you can talk to it like a human. You can say, okay, can you go into my email and email, uh, email all the employees that, you know, this Friday we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to actually take a day off and no one comes to the office. And it's like, yeah, no problem. And it does it. Like it can just understand human instructions as well as your VA, as well as your personal assistant. And it, it, it absorbs all the information coming to you, filters it and tells you what you need to know. It takes all the information from you and disseminates it and goes and does what it needs to do. It does all the searching 
whether it is owned by a major search engine or just uses it like a human does, right? It, it, it changes the game entirely, entirely. And that is definitely coming. It will be, it'll be here within the next second or third year, five years tops. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think it's two or three years away. Cause yeah, as you say, that's, uh, that's certainly what uh, uh, we know uh, is, is, is the golden goose that many of these companies are working on, right? They exactly. That, that becomes where everybody goes. And then of course, then it owns all the data there. Um, and, and two major use cases, which are already super popular and billions upon billions of dollars have already been invested. A companion of any shape and form, use that, that word as loosely as you want, including friendship, just including talking and chatting, but also people are starting to have romantic AI companions. That's becoming mainstream. It's becoming more and more known. I'm not even talking about a robot body. I'm talking about just chatting with somebody and they tell you they love you and they're always there to support you. Sounds pretty good to me. A lot of people would like that, right? Uh, billions of dollars have already been dumped into that. Uh, uh, that's uh, 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 Anthropic, if I recall correctly, is kind of more, what Amazon has dumped $4 billion in, and they're kind of more going down that direction. But also that blends completely and is in no way separated or, or dichotomized from the personal assistant who does tasks for you or the, the personal assistant who's both. Scar Joe on the movie Her. Come, come for the personal assistant who does stuff for you, stay for the sexy voice and, and the charm and the companionship. That is the holy grail that everyone is tripping over each other and investing billions upon billions of dollars and spending over a million dollar a day, some companies, to get to. This is what Siri wants to be. It's what the Google Assistant wants to be. Just in some form or another, uh, that's where they want to go, right? And that will be done in, in, in two or three years. It'll be done poorly. It'll be, it'll be terrible. It won't be that personable. It won't be that, you know, that, that, that companion, it, companionship won't be there. It'll be that great. It'll be hollow. It'll be empty. It'll be worse than dating on Tinder or so I hear. I'm a happily married man, but I hear that apparently that's, that's, uh, that's nuts. I hear from all my male friends. I wouldn't know. Again, I'm a married man, but, but the, the soullessness of it will, will be there in spades with the AI, but it will get better. And by the fifth year, I think they will have cracked. They will have gotten enough uh, crackpot philosophers and psychologists like me or through, through instructing it, through talking with users, they'll find out what users want. And it'll be more or less kind of like schizophrenic, kind of bipolar kind of companions and workers who are not that great, but pretty much already as good as hiring someone on Upwork, for example, not dissing anyone on Upwork, not dissing anyone overseas who you might, you might outsource to. But, but I have to say the, the user experience of using Upwork lately has been terrible. Some, some really crazy people who, who are not very good workers is what I've gotten recently, could just be me, but AI can match that easily in second, in two or three years, in five years, AI can do it way cheaper, way easier. Instead of 15 bucks an hour, it'll be 15 bucks a month, right? And uh, 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 that's what's coming down the pipe and that will, that will change everyone's life completely. Their work life, it will change completely. Just think about the jobs that will be fired or lost or hired, or just think about the new things you could do or extend yourself or tell your, 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 your AI PA, Hey, I want to know all about, you know, I'm looking into exercise. Can you look into it for me? And it'll do all the research and it'll know that okay, you're an 80 year old grandma. You shouldn't be taking Krav Maga. That's too hard. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you in a nice aqua size course. And I know your schedule. I'll put you in the right one. It'll be perfect. It'll be chef's kiss, right? The one in two years won't know that. It'll be like, I found Krav Maga. It's close to you. Therefore I chose it. You know, and grandma will go do that and she'll get an arm broken or something. It'll be terrible. The, 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 everyone will be making fun of it. It'll be terrible to start out with. If they would adopt psychology and philosophy sooner, and if I could find tech partners who would help me perfect this system, we could jump over those terrible states and I can have a much more thoughtful, uh, emotive, human understanding. Oh, AI. so that's that interesting. So you're saying that's actually, I mean, it's going to happen anyways, but it's going to short circuit that process. Yeah, I could short circuit that process. My, my Cassandra prototype already sh short circuits that process. It's just that I'm not open AI. I can't allow a million users in to, to hammer it every day. Every thought costs me about 10 cents, right? Every time I interact with it, it costs me about 10 cents currently. So those prices will come down. And so either I'll meet them in the middle or I'll, I, I've already, my company has already been valued at a million dollars USD. Uh, I'm already looking for a CTO. If anybody out there wants to invest or has technical technological background, Let's go for it, because if we get 0.001% of that, that golden goose market, as JP said it, we'll be millionaires, right? Yeah, just, and it, we'll yeah. be quickly bought by one of these, these companies and just incorporate our psychology that we, 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 we put into it. Because I don't underestimate the psychological uh, context and realities and, 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 and the philosophical appreciations 
I have 5,000 years of, of philosophy and psychology to draw upon to, to build this thing. That's how I was able to kind of leapfrog them. But, but because no one is really thinking of that right now, and, and the, the discourse is so dominated by computer science, hard science pushed in that direction, and there's a hard science, soft science divide. I don't know if you, you, you encountered that, JP, in your university studies. You know, you start talking psychology to a computer scientist, and they go like, yeah, they just write you off right away. When I start saying, you know, this is approaching self-awareness, they're like, no, self-awareness cannot be defined. I know it's not self-aware. Well, if self-awareness can't be defined, then you can't know it's not, can you? Like, they don't, they don't realize the, the, the craziness that they're saying, and they're, they're, they're simultaneously looking for self-awareness and simultaneously wanting self-awareness and needing self-awareness for their self-driving cars and for their personal assistance, and simultaneously eschewing the idea and simultaneously uh, uh, saying it's impossible. Those three things are in contradiction. You can't have all those three things, which is what they're doing. And so we have a huge opportunity for a psychologist and a philosopher to work with tech people and investors to leapfrog them and, and That's come right. out with the AGI. And there will be a marriage of these things, right? It's, these are ex existential uh uh, things that need to be considered and that's just exactly. where we're at in terms of the cycle right now right and it's you know getting down to the question of consciousness right at what point are we to discuss yes. this being a, a level of consciousness it's fa fascinating topics and we can go on for hours with regards to this type of uh, conversation and the predictions right of where we're going josh i really appreciate our conversation around this i need to take a minute just to think what the you know what we're doing in a legal sense from this and again i appreciate you're not a lawyer but you're so well informed on this uh in canada here i think uh there's a voluntary code of conduct that's been proposed right and uh we see the industry kind of proposing that uh, companies, uh, I guess for the lack of a better term, sign on. Um, and we know that these type of initiatives are are being proposed throughout uh, the Western world. We hear yes. Elon proposing that there's you know a regulatory body, body be created in the U.S. as well. Are these things that actually make sense? Are these things that actually make sense in, in the sense uh, that actually will have any effect at all? Uh, given the way that AI is going to develop from here on out? No, sadly they won't. There's no possible way uh, for government to rein in capitalism at all, never mind in the most lucrative uh, niche capital capitalism has ever produced. Government is completely toothless. Government will be completely toothless. The only thing, for example, this is precise law, this Canadian law you're, you're referring to, has done is just delayed Google's and Anthropic's release of Bard for Google and for Anthropic's Cloud and Cloud 2 uh, AIs in Canada. Bing otherwise has opened it up. Open AI has opened it up. They don't care. No one's going to hold them to account. When Google and Anthropic realize this, because Google, Google and Anthropic have better legal teams, so they're like, no, you can't do this, and they have more teeth in the company. So, and, and, and Google, of course, is being sued all over the place for, for, for competition laws, for monopoly laws, and things of that nature. So Google has to be careful, and the, and, the, and the EU has been after them for years, and now the US has finally realized, oh yeah, I guess we have our monopoly here, we gotta take care of it. So Google's worried about it, but no, 99% uh, sure that it'll have 1% effect in whatever these these AI companies do, there's just too much money at stake, and who those who have the money make the rules. So so it's just not going to do anything other than make it impossible for me to try Bard out and me to try Anthropic. Yeah, that's what out it's doing this. right now, and that's all it's doing is just slowing me it's down. It's not going to keep up, right? It's slowing down, and it just can't keep up with the pace at which change no, is occurring. No. And AI is only you know it's a factor we don't even know to what extent it's going to uh, accelerate things, right? The use of AI is going to accelerate all this the, the the evolutionary process here, isn't it? It is, and 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 don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm a left-leaning liberal, uh, center-left, really. Uh, um, and so I usually don't like a lot of what comes out of the Trudeau government because it is really too far left for, for in, in, my, in my tastes. Uh, that's, a, that's a minor political critique. Please scratch it off the record if anyone disagrees. But, but this is the only time I agreed. It's like, yes, this law is useful. And yes, the writer's strike was useful. And I met someone in the writer's strike, uh, a, a, a comedian from Los Angeles, and, 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 and I said, I work in AI and he gave me a really angry look, right? I said, but no, I, I support you. You should definitely, union should definitely strike because they are definitely going to take your jobs when they can, for sure. So so use whatever left-leaning power is there for you uh, as you should. It, it, it's just the problem is that I know that eventually, I, I know it's just, it's too little, too late, it's too weak. Ultimately, five years down the road, it's not going to do anything, but but is, it, is, it, is the heart in the right place? Yes, the heart is in the right place. Um, this is what I said in my, my TEDx talk uh, eight years ago, is that you can never control capitalism in this way. You can never control big tech in this way. You can't let big tech be the, 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 the people who control truth in society. 
you cannot let that happen, right? It's it, it, it censorship. It's the worst kind of censorship. You don't even know what they're censoring. I said immediately the U.S. government should buy Google or the U.S. Uh, or NATO should buy Google and turn around and hire them to run it because no one's better at running Google infrastructure wise than Google. And we should have a charter of rights or a bill of rights for those folks in the States uh, that protects the rights of the searcher and searchee or protects the rights of the AI user and governs what the AI will do behind a Rawlsian veil of ignorance. So the AI doesn't know if you're white or black or male or female or trans or straight or whatever you are. You're just a citizen in the system. You have these rights and the AI will follow these rights. And we have a referendum every four years to vote on the rights, whether we like the rights and the AI executes according to those rights. That's what we need to do. It is the only way to have an equitable system. And I guarantee to you, although none of us will be here to see it, I, I presume in a hundred years, it's exactly what we will have. Because if you look at the philosophy of how it works, it's the only way it, it can work equitably. It's the only way. And we will realize with all the wars and the terrors that are going to happen in the next hundred years, we'll wake up from that after World War III and we'll be like, okay, this is how we have to run. The whole world order needs to change now. Just like World War II changed the whole world order, the World War III that we're going to have for sure is going to change the world the world order for the better. And it'll be more a lot like Star Trek, actually. We'll have a post-scarcity society where robots do all the work. We just sit around and philosophize and do art all day. Some of us who want to do work, if you want to be a lawyer because you love it, you can do it, but you don't need to do it for a job, right? And um, uh, AI will be doing everything, running everything, uh, and including world government with world currency, which will be Bitcoin or whatever comes out of Bitcoin. That's the way it's definitely going. Uh, I could see uh, the last 5,000 years of philosophy and how AI works, technologically speaking. That's, that's the most likely path. Uh, uh, we'll lose about 3 billion in my estimation in these wars. And then the, the, the population will skyrocket after that, after we clean up all the climate change problems and, and whatnot. The, the human race is definitely not going to die by any stretch of the imagination. And there will not be Terminator wars shooting plasma lasers all over the place. There will be in, in combat zones, but not, not around the world. A, we're not going to lose control of AI. That just doesn't happen. The Terminator scenario is, is completely ridiculous. It's a beautiful movie. Don't get me wrong. I love James Cameron's movies. And I love seeing Arnie, you know, saying I'll be back and all that stuff. But 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 they're not going to lose control of their AGI. The, the military, that's not going to happen. Uh, that just a five star general doesn't give his firing command codes away to an AI, to some computer that does not occur. Right. So so that is definitely not going to happen. But they will lose control of it on a small scale and it will sadly kill civilians here or there, as they already do. But AI running the show will actually do it much more effectively with a much more perfect operational record. The collateral damage watch should go down yeah, they're with less, AI. Which running. is fascinating, I think. Yeah. Uh, Josh, uh, a really fascinating conversation. As I say, we could go on all day with this. Uh, it's been great to think what it's gonna look like five years, and then as you say, 100 years. And it's hard to uh, uh, it's hard to disagree that we're not gonna see a lot of the things that you've just, uh, you've just alluded to actually occurring. Uh, right now you're developing things, obviously, uh, and working at a frenetic pace. What's the best way to reach uh, reach you if someone's interested in learning more? If someone's interested on, on, on a light uh, a light light touch, uh, just follow me on Twitter, uh, at Josh Bashinsky, J-O-S-H-B is in Bob, A-C-H-Y is in YouTube, and it's in Nancy, S-K-I. And then if you want email, you want you want to email me directly or talk directly, that, that's fine by me. Go ahead and email me. Again, it's the same name, Josh Bashinsky at gmail.com. It's J-O-S-H-B is in Bob, A-C-H-Y is in YouTube, N is in Nancy, SKI at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck right now. I'm waiting for investment. You know, I'm, I'm just one psychologist philosopher who I think sees the forest for the trees. And I think we could make a better, a better AGI or at least get bought out by somebody and, and make some money. So if someone in tech out there wants equity, I've got a million dollars, uh, a company here already valued to, 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 to start sharing around. If people are interested, let me know. If you're interested in more AI consulting or talking about more uh, micro AI stuff, uh, by all means, email me as well. Josh, that's absolutely fantastic. Thanks for this. Uh, we will we will revisit this conversation, right? To look at how the business is going and obviously how the uh, how uh, AGI is developed uh, or continue to develop from here. Uh, so thank you very much for this. I like to end these shows with one thing someone listening here can take with them to the rest of the day, the rest of the week. We alluded to some things in this conversation here, but if you're you know you're talking to somebody or in someone's ear right now. What's something that they can do to make a big difference, I guess, for their and maybe those around them, their uh, near and uh, longer term futures on a go forward? What I would say is you need to invest your time and your mind space in AI now. Start looking at what's going on, sign up for a newsletter or, or task someone in your company that it's they're the AI czar. That's their job to keep a laser focus on AI because it can change your business for the better or worse 
like that. And every day it's just something new comes out and it's just insane that, that, you know, my business has changed. I'm making, uh, my revenue has doubled since AI has started. And now the new AI companies that I've done because I was a first adopter. This is the thing to watch both for a risk mitigation, but also for possibilities. And, and I like to say on these things, AI is going to destabilize. Yes. It's going to take jobs away. Yes. But it's also going to make new jobs. As many jobs as it takes away, it's going to make new ones. You might need to pivot really quick in a business, in a job, you might need to pivot really quick. So watch it, use ChatGPT if you can, use MidJourney if you can. They're the, they're the front runners right now. That could easily change. Invest in it, watch it, at least watch it uh, if you can. And if you can't, uh, uh, parcel it out to somebody else you trust. And if, if feeling that, if you have the time, just start using it, see how it thinks, see how it talks, see how it gives you stuff. Buy the $20 per month thing for whatever and see what it does. And you're gonna see, you're gonna start to find, use your imagination. Ask it, how can I use you? What's the best ways to use you? Talk to it like a human, and you're going to start to see some magic happen. Yeah, magic is happening here. Thanks so much for this here today, Josh. I look forward to the next time on the Millionaire's Learn.